This is Dr. Eric Osansky, and in this video, I'm going to discuss how to boost your vitamin D to optimal levels, which is important for anyone looking to improve the health of their immune system, especially those people with autoimmune conditions. So I'll be discussing what type of vitamin D you should take, how much vitamin D you should take, and how to maintain healthy vitamin D levels. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand the test results so that they can find or remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. I need to let you know that this video is not meant to be used as medical advice or as a recommended treatment protocol, and it isn't a replacement for consulting with a competent healthcare practitioner. In a different video, I discussed the lab range versus the optimal range of vitamin D, but I'll briefly discuss it again here. And the reason for this is because you need to be familiar with the optimal reference range so that you will know how to boost your vitamin D to an optimal level. First of all, you always want to test for 25 hydroxy vitamin D and not 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. If you want more information on this, you can check out one of my other videos where I discussed this. Regarding the lab reference range, Many labs have a reference range between 30 and 100 nanograms per milliliter, although this will vary depending on the lab, as some labs will have a range between 30 and 80 nanograms per milliliter, while others will have a range between 20 and 100 nanograms per milliliter. For optimal immune system health, the optimal range of 25 hydroxy vitamin D should be somewhere between 50 and 80 nanograms per milliliter. It's also worth mentioning that if you live outside of the United States, Labs commonly use the units nanomoles per liter, and 50 nanograms per milliliter is equal to 125 nanomoles per liter. Before discussing how much vitamin D you should take, I want to briefly discuss what type of vitamin D supplement you should take. Vitamin D supplements come in two primary forms, vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Many medical doctors recommend vitamin D2 to their patients, but since vitamin D3 has been proven to be the more potent form, I recommend vitamin D3 to all of my patients. I commonly recommend vitamin D3 in liquid form, but taking it in a capsule or soft gel is also fine. I also need to mention that I recommend taking vitamin K2 with vitamin D3, and the reason for this is because vitamin D increases the intestinal absorption of calcium, and vitamin K2 helps to guide the calcium into the bone. If someone is deficient in vitamin K2, then some of the calcium will end up in the soft tissues of the body, such as the arteries. Check out the description below for a brand of vitamin D3 with K2 that I commonly recommend to my patients. Other cofactors that help with vitamin D absorption include vitamin A, magnesium, and boron. So how much vitamin D should you take in order to get your levels between 50 and 80 nanograms per milliliter? First of all, while I realize that many people take vitamin D, to make this easier to understand, I'm going to assume you're not currently taking any vitamin D. But even if you are supplementing with vitamin D, this information will still be beneficial. First of all, regardless of whether someone is taking vitamin D or not, they will want to get a baseline reading for 25 hydroxy vitamin D. Once you get this reading, the amount of vitamin D you take depends on your levels. For example, if someone is below the lab reference range, I commonly will give 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 per day for one or two months, and then I'll switch them to 5,000 IUs per day for an additional two months. If someone has levels between 30 and 39 nanograms per milliliter, I will usually recommend 5,000 IUs per day. Whereas if someone has levels between 40 to 49 nanograms per milliliter, I recommend anywhere between 1,000 and 5,000 IUs per day. For example, if someone has a 25 hydroxy vitamin D level of 41 and they're not already supplementing with vitamin D, I will probably recommend for them to take around 4 to 5,000 IUs per day. But if they have a level of 48 nanograms per milliliter, I might only recommend 1,000 or 2,000 IUs per day. And if someone is not supplementing with vitamin D and they have a level of 50 nanograms per milliliter or greater, then supplementation might not be necessary. If someone does start taking vitamin D supplements, they will want to retest after two to four months. And in most cases, if you follow the guidelines mentioned here, your vitamin D levels will be above 50 nanograms per milliliter. I should mention that you might want to consider working with a healthcare practitioner to help you optimize your vitamin D levels. But I also need to mention that many medical doctors recommend vitamin D2 to their patients, and most pay attention to the lab reference range and not the optimal reference range I discussed in this video. Once you have achieved optimal levels of vitamin D, you might wonder what you need to do in order to maintain healthy levels. 
This of course depends on the person, as some people will need to continue taking vitamin D3 supplements on a daily basis, while others will be able to maintain healthy vitamin D levels through regular sun exposure. Speaking of sun exposure, it's important to mention that it is very difficult to correct a vitamin D deficiency through sun exposure alone. In any case, regular retesting will determine if you need to continue supplementing with vitamin D3, and if so, how much. For example, let's say you were deficient in vitamin D and you took 10,000 IUs per day for two months, and then took 5,000 IUs per day for two months, and then did a retest, which showed that your vitamin D levels were now 65 nanograms per milliliter. How do you know if you need to continue taking vitamin D? Well, what I would recommend is to try reducing the dosage to 2,000 or 3,000 IUs per day, and then do another retest in a few months. If the numbers remain steady, or even if they decrease a little, then I would stay on the same dosage. If they continue to increase, you can reduce the dosage by another 1,000 IUs per day, and then do another retest in a few months. If the levels greatly decrease, then this probably means that you need to increase by 1,000 or 2,000 IUs per day. You might be wondering if there is any concern about vitamin D toxicity. The truth is that vitamin D toxicity is rare, but it can happen. This is yet another reason to consider working with a healthcare practitioner. Symptoms of a vitamin D toxicity may include confusion, apathy, recurrent vomiting, abdominal pain, polyuria, which is frequent urination, a polydipsia, which is excessive thirst, and dehydration. On a comprehensive metabolic panel, you probably will also see very high serum calcium levels, also known as hypercalcemia. According to the research, a 25-hydroxy vitamin D level higher than 150 nanograms per milliliter, or 375 nanomoles per liter, this is the hallmark of vitamin D toxicity. Although I've had a few patients with levels above 100 nanograms per milliliter who didn't have any problems, I would try to keep your levels below 100 nanograms per milliliter. Of course, there are other equally important blood tests to consider getting, which you can learn about by clicking on the video below, where I discuss seven blood tests those with autoimmune conditions should consider getting. Also, if you found this information to be valuable, before clicking on that video, please like this current video, and if you have any questions about how to boost your vitamin D levels, please feel free to let me know below, and I'll catch you on the next video.